I'll tell you what, they, they, they announced this week Twilight getting a TV series reboot. Off the cuff, off the coattails of Harry Potter getting a TV series reboot. And boy, oh boy, is this just not history repeating itself. And Twilight fans, brace yourself because you're not going to like what I'm about to say. Twilight was like the first of a series of young adult dystopian supernatural fantasy novels adapted to films to try and cash in on the success of Harry Potter. That is a fact. Now, I'm not talking about the quality of the movies. I'm sure if you grew up watching Twilight, they're very nostalgic to you, and that's fantastic. But here's here's the thing. Harry Potter was just a phenomenon. Unbelievably successful financially, commercially, critically, all of the above, right? And it still is today. And when people start seeing that success, they're like, we need our own Harry Potter. We need this. This is how we're going to make heaps of money. Twilight came and then it all steamrolled after that. All were trailblazing after Harry Potter. Twilight. And and, and to be honest, and this is going to piss people off, none of them were remotely, both books and films, none of these series that I'm about to mention were remotely on par with Harry Potter. They were all, and that's not saying they were bad. It's just that Harry Potter was very good. All of these copycat franchises or just franchises that were like, you know, we need to find the next Harry Potter. Where's like a book series that's good, that kids will love, that we can make money off. And, and, and it, and it began, right? Twilight, awful. The Hunger Games, didn't finish it. Jennifer Lawrence in those movies, awful hated her. Seriously, Jennifer Lawrence in Hunger Games, quite possibly some of the worst acting I have ever seen. Um, After that, Maze Runner. Jesus Christ, watched it for the first time earlier this year. Haven't read the books, obviously. Haven't read any of the books of these. Maze Runner, surely one of the dumbest concepts of all time. Like, I watched the movie. They never explain the maze. Why? What is the? What is going on? Maybe I should watch the rest of them. Divergent couldn't tell you a single thing about it. Definitely copycat. Definitely a copycat. Aragon. That was a flop. That was literally them being like, "We need a Harry Potter." Ah, oh, Aragon, dragons, cool. Fail. They just, an absolute fail. Didn't even get a sequel. Nor did The Mortal Instruments. Tragic. And of course, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Tragic again. And the legacy, like, you know, I feel like that's sort of the order of the legacy there. Like Twilight and Hunger Games are certainly like the biggest in terms of their fandom and appeal and reach. They were pretty big. Twilight was massive. Twilight was a phenomenon particularly in teenage girls, but it was a huge phenomenon. Um, and I have seen, I've seen the first Twilight movie. And I, all I really remember is like Edward Cullen, who's Cedric Diggory, like saves her from a car. Is that, that happens? He like blocks the car. And then there's that moment where he's like, I'm 17. And she's like, how long have you been 17? And he's like, a very long time. Um, pretty pathetic though, to be honest. And here's the other thing that both Hunger Games and Twilight did that just pissed me off to no end. Of course, Harry Potter, the films, they split the final book into two movies, part one and part two. Now, they say it's because there's so much from the book to cram in that they want to do it justice. Cool, that's a good way of putting it, but, you know, Order of the Phoenix was much longer. That wasn't two parts, right? The real reason is because with two mon- two movies, you make two monies. <laughs> with two movies, you make twice as much money. And then Twilight does their Breaking Dawn, parts one and two. Unnecessary. 
because it wasn't that big, but they just wanted to squeeze every possible dollar out of it. And Hunger Games did Mockingjay part one and part two. I'm going to actually look up like the, the box office return of, of the Twilight films. Um, like, so the, so the five movies made three point, basically $3.35 billion. But I'm more curious on a film by film basis, what they made. Um, Breaking Dawn part two made 820 million. Breaking Dawn part one, 712 million. Eclipse made 600. Yeah. So I don't think any of them made a billion dollars. It was maybe 10 years ago that these were all coming out though, but you know, first one only made 400 million, whatever. The fact that they're now making a Twilight TV series and they announced it straight after the Harry Potter series was announced. And I have some thoughts on that. You can find them on YouTube or over on my other feed, the Harry Potter and the Boys podcast feed, which is my Harry Potter fan fiction podcast. I guess just like, why do I think Twilight is a bit pathetic? I don't know. I actually don't know. Maybe it is a really good story. Maybe it's just that I was a teenage boy and Twilight was like this thing where you're like, oh, what the hell? And Harry Potter was cool. And like Lord of the Rings was cool, but Twilight was like, oh, this sucks. And I have watched the first one. Maybe I have Maybe I have to watch all the Twilight movies. Maybe that's like a challenge for this show, like watching every Twilight movie and just seeing what I think. Because I know like... Here's what I know about Twilight. I know there's like Team Edward, Team Jacob, and that was like a big deal. I know Taylor Lautner is in it, um, of course, and Cedric Deary and Kirsten Christian Stewart. Um, but aside from that, like I know, I know they have a baby. At, that's right. They have a baby at the end that has like a weird name. All the Twilight fans are like, oh my God, Mike, fucking get it right. Um, so I'm pretty sure she ends up with Edward and does she not become a vampire herself? She like submits to being a vampire girl. I don't know. And I do like, you know, supernatural fantasy stuff like vampires and werewolves. That's cool. So maybe I watch all the Twilight movies, but I think, you know, with the Harry Potter series announced, they then announced the Twilight series genuinely would be unsurprised if we got a Hunger Games series. I know they were talking for a while about making a Percy Jackson series. And this is kind of what it is. Like, I guess back then it was like, we're going to make money by making these movies. But now it's sort of like, we're going to make money by making these shows. It really is a sign of the times and how cinema and television has changed since, I guess, 2001 was when the first Harry Potter came out and then the Lord of the Rings movies came out. Now it's all series and yeah, it's, it's a very fascinating turn of events to see that they're making this, they're making these like shows now, as opposed to rebooting them as movies, which is what we used to do. Very, very interesting. Um, but yeah, again, all of these books being adapted into films back in the sort of, you know, late 2000s, early 2010s, and, and I guess like when it comes to something like Twilight, I guess for me, I'm interested in, I'm so interested in pop culture. So basically I'll watch anything. I'll literally like watch anything because I'm, I, I'm not interested as much in like the quality of a film, for example. I'm more interested in like the decisions being made for that pop culture sort of artifact to be represented in film. Like I'm interested in, for example, like when they made the Wednesday Adams TV show on Netflix, which was great. I then went to watch like the Adams family movie, the live action one. Cause I was like, Oh, I'm just interested to see how they adapt these characters across different mediums and how they've adapted them over time or like, um, something I'm about to talk to uh, talk about next, actually, you'll see, um, is similar. But yeah, very, very interesting. 